What is going on, dudes, and welcome to my very first Black Ops Sniper gameplay upload. I thought that in honor of it, I would do something a bit different, so I decided to write a poem of the mock history of snipers in the Call of Duty franchise. So if you enjoy, uh, be sure to leave a rating, and also if you think I should do more of these poems in the future, feel free to suggest topics in the comments section. But that being said, uh, let's get started. In days long ago, there was Call of Duty 2, and on that game a player named Timothy Magoo. Now, Timothy Magoo was a boy, not unlike you, unless of course you're of the Dosecki's gender, who acquired this game one fateful day after school. You see on this day, little Timmy went to play, but when he popped in the disc, much to his dismay, he found that in playing, he would die instantly from the bullets of a gun named the Car 98K. Flabbergasted, he exclaimed, what such gun is this that could kill a virtual man with just one measly hit? So he equipped it himself, because as goes the saying, if you can't beat him, join him. And it was a slaying. So the game loaded up. It was three, two, one, go. And Timmy was off, dashing through the open snow. Just a few seconds in, and his beady eyes were met by a thickly coated enemy with a shiny bayonet. He aimed in at once and mashed his right trigger. His placement was true, and he fired with great vigor. And it was at that moment that a new being was born. As he grew wings and a tail and a narwhal horn, he saw his mark drop. And oh, what a sight! So much so that he continued on through the nights and on to the next day. He simply couldn't get enough. So he began to do twirls like a fairy cream puff. He would jump off of buildings and ledges and stairs. No scopes and quick scopes, all part of the affair. And on went the habit it couldn't be dropped. Month after month, he was on like a clock, poning noobs here and there, hitting quads everywhere. His ego inflated like a balloon filled with air. And as he ascended the ranks of the mini Grizz army, he was met with raised eyebrows as his dedication was alarming. But it was only then that he met his real Prince Charming. For you see at that point, Infinity Ward released a fine game known as Call of Duty 4. And a gun on this game, called the M40A3, would become Timmy's mistress of dark secrecy. For together they would roam the very place Timmy called home. The maps of this game with the varying biomes. He felt like a god, and each day he would return. He'd toss the homework aside. It could wait its turn. It was time to continue his reign of terror. Trick shots and ladder stalls, all trial and error. But what Timmy didn't know is that amidst all the fury, his kill death was falling in one great big hurry. All the fakey 360 YY ladder no scopes were sending his stats down some slippery slopes. But that wasn't enough to have him call quits. It still had prestige, the glamour and glitz, and so he continued. A persistent little one. As far as he could see, it was still good clean fun, because at this time, he was still a slightly rare find. But not for very long would he be one of a kind. For you see, at this point, a little thing called YouTube began to define what was cool like an ice cube. Almighty montages galore triggered a far and wide uproar that began a frenzy of snipers and C4. For now, everyone wanted to get that sweet clip. Recorder or not, the trend was still hip. And now Timmy no longer stuck out like a sore thumb in his vast world of glory. What had it become? Then with the release of Modern Warfare 2, along came a perk, which he began to use. The name of this perk was Sleight of Hand Pro. The implications of it larger than you'll ever know. For you see, Sleight of Hand made for doubled scope in speeds, meaning all those who tried could quick scope with ease. And once word caught on, well, it spread like a fire. Something which Timmy did not much admire. Intervention extended mags or FMJ with Sleight of Hand Pro. It was an endless buffet. But Timmy persevered. He wouldn't give up. Sniping was his life. He still couldn't get enough. So he changed his gamer tag, MLG elite scopes, three X's and Z's, it was the meaning of dope. But all too soon the masses caught on, elite snipes and pro scopes common as nail salons, so now his only hope was to make a montage and use it to boost himself above the barrage, and again, he'd feel special, unique, and rare. When he entered a lobby, other people would care, but with a snap of his fingers, Modern Warfare 2 was through, and everyone had a montage, Rocky Balboa too. Now Black Ops became the anticipated game for which a closed beta came out. First Strike was its name. And all the J-taggers, the modders, the hacks got their hands on that file. They spread it quite fast. They all wanted to get that early video release, knowing it would spell a million views, at least. Timmy was one of them with his five sniper classes, and he began to quickscope all the game developers' asses. But sure enough, the beta was ended prematurely, for all the uninvited guests made things far too squirrely. Timmy left Vonderhaar less than impressed, so he vowed to make quickscoping a thing of the past. And now all Timmy had left was his early capped footy. Surely that could make up for him causing the death of quickscoping. So he edited it all in a sick mini Taj and posted it up, hoping for fame and an entourage. But all that he got was a copyright strike. For poor Timmy Magoo, his heart had taken its last spike. It was then that he made it his mission, his lipstick and glitter, to spam JD2020 and Vonderhaar on Twitter. Never-ending nagging would surely be the key to get sniping back the way it needed to be. But it was only once logical arguments came into play that the game devs considered letting snipers see day. 
And so it was then that a patch was released and a compromise was finally reached. The end.